Gang, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk about the airport scams that have returned to the Nino Aquino International Airport in Manila, Philippines. It has long since been a notorious airport for scams, for ripping people off, for stealing stuff out of their luggage, and for a while that kind of slowed down. And now that things have reopened, the scams are back. Today has been a day of massive or, or several different arrests. And it all started when I read this article in the Manila Times, the manilatimes.net, where it talks about Manila Airport, the worst in the world. And what had happened was a couple of different um, travel websites had done ratings on different airports and had rated the Manila Airport to be the worst in the world, according to this article. And one of the things this article references is that one of the reasons behind that is because of how it has always been known to have people have things stolen out of their luggage. It's There's a saying about it being open luggage, that it was just things would disappear out of them. And for years that happened. People would come in, their checked in luggage, if there was anything valuable in it, it would be taken. In fact, I've had family members who flew here from the United States that were OFWs that, in other countries, and they have had lots of stuff stolen out of their checked baggage over the years. And it was so bad that back in 2015 and 2016, they weren't just stealing stuff, they were actually doing things that could get people prosecuted. In fact, there's a whole Wikipedia article you can see here on that talking about the great bullet scam of 2015 and 16. And this was an ongoing problem. This just wasn't happening once or twice. But essentially what was happening is people were planting a bullet, usually one bullet, inside of a person's checked luggage. And then they were being pointed out to security guards. The security guards were allegedly in on the scam, would come over, they would ask for a bribe in order to not have to turn this in. And at one point, there was a missionary, I believe from the United States, who was 20 years old. He came in and they found, they found one bullet that was a like 22 caliber long rifle, you know, a two cent bullet, one of the cheapest in the world. And in my line of profession as an attorney in the United States, this would have been laughed out of court. No prosecutor that had any ethics whatsoever in the United States, unless they were grinding some political acts, would have brought this. Because who in their right mind is going to import one bullet? They're going to smuggle one bullet in. What in the heck are you going to do with one twenty-two bullet and risk being in prison in the Philippines as a foreigner? It's insane. It's, it's, whoever came up with the idea was obviously a very low IQ individual to think anybody would actually believe that. So as the Philippines has been reopening back up and tourists are now coming back to the Philippines, we're starting to see the scams come back. And just recently, what just in a week or so ago went viral that there was a Thai tourist who had come in and they have, one of the friends of the Thai tourist actually has a video of the a security officer allegedly taking money out of the man's wallet, which had been placed in the tray, the conveyor belt that goes through the x-ray, and then sticking that money in another security guard's pocket and then walking away. Well, when the tie got over and this viral, this video is viral, he sees that his money's gone. He makes a scene about it. They take him into a back room and allegedly what happens is they give him back the money, but then insist that the video camera footage be deleted. Uh, what ends up happening now is that the Two security guards there that were allegedly involved in this have now been suspended and the OTS, that's the uh, transportation agency that's over, the, was their employer, uh, has suspended them and has come out with a statement yesterday that said they are actually going to pursue charges on this and put them behind bars. And today, according to GMA News Online, Another OTS security guard has been arrested and the head of OTS actually went to the jail cell and just just blasted this guy for what he's accused of doing, which was he was said to have taken a watch that again was put in one of those conveyor belts going through the x-ray and taken it from a Chinese tourist who then went on to report it. 
And apparently there's CCTV camera of that, and that's how they were able to identify the person who has allegedly done this. So those scams of stealing, even at the x-ray machine when you're coming through, and the luggages from the checked luggages seem to be back in the Philippines. And that's unfortunate because it really does hurt the Filipino people who are in the tourist industry, who are in the food and beverage industry, who are in the hotel industry, the resort industry. These people's jobs depend on people coming in and those tourists and a few, a very few bad apples at one airport is really causing loss of reputation for the country there. And I have been through that airport many times. I've never had anyone try to do anything scammy to me, never had anything stolen. I do take precautions there. But every personnel that I have ever encountered at that airport was always very nice. They were very honest. They were very helpful. I felt welcomed coming into the Philippines. So again, it's not the, it's not most of the people who are working in that industry. It's a very, very small amount, at least in my opinion. So as a traveler around the world, I've always been aware of the Manila Airport problem, but I always have taken precautions when I travel, both with my checked luggage and the stuff that I've got when I'm going through security. So the very first thing that you can do and that I do with my checked luggage is I don't put anything valuable in there or I try not to. So if it's something that's worth money, something that I'm gonna be really upset about, if it's lost, it's not going into checked luggage. It's gonna go on with me on my carry-on so that I've got more control of it and so that I can better keep an eye on not having that stuff stolen. The second thing is when you're using luggage for checked luggage, make sure that you use hard luggage so that there are no pockets or zipper pockets or places that can be put in. There's one way to get into the, the, the luggage itself and not various little pockets that things can, like bullets or something can be dropped in and you can be accused of. Then the next level of defense is I always take the little bitty locks and I put those on there. They're the TSA approved ones. Now, there's gonna to be tons of people at these airports that have TSA keys that they can get into them, but it takes a little bit of time, not much. They can even cut the lock off if they want to, but when you are trying to prevent theft going through airports or really anywhere, your biggest ally is time. The more time it's gonna take someone to get into that luggage compared to somebody else's luggage is gonna buy you time. So that lock does a little bit to help, and it also obviously keeps uh, opportunistic people at bay. The next thing I do is I use straps. And the straps that I use, they wrap around the luggage and they, they take a little while to actually put on the luggage, but you can get them off really quickly. So it's not really going to deter a thief from being able to have to take them off, but they know that that's an extra step they're going to have to do, and they might have to reconnect those to make it look like the luggage was intact and not opened, because they don't want you finding out that your stuff has been stolen at the airport. They want you to figure that out when you get back to your hotel because the case has gone cold. So the more time that they have, one, to get in into that luggage, but then to put the cords back on it to make it look like it hasn't been got into is going to mean that they are not going to go for your luggage and they're going to go for some other easy target. The final thing that you can do with checked luggage, and this is almost overkill, but I have seen some people doing it, is that they saran wrap the entire luggage when they're ready to check it in at the airport because then somebody's gonna have to cut that saran wrap off and it's just another layer of protection because once that's off, the thief is gonna know that the second you see it coming to you when you're picking up your luggage at the, at the luggage checkout, is you're gonna know somebody's been in that luggage, you're gonna get in there immediately, you're gonna find out what's gone and you're gonna report it and you know it's just been a few minutes since the things were taken out of there. Now, when I'm going through security and they're x-raying my stuff and I put it in the plastic container, I travel with, it's not a very masculine looking thing, but I carry one of these little man bags and I put my wallet and stuff inside here and then it has two zippers. I simply put a lock on here and they drop it in the kitty. And so they're going to have to get that lock off of there while I'm basically staring and other people are staring at the luggages going through the x-ray thing. Or if they really want in this bag, 
what they're gonna have to do is they're gonna come and get me and ask me to unlock it, open that up, and so that they can see inside. And the advantage there is if they do that, and I actually have had that happen, um, they're gonna look inside and I'm gonna be right there beside them while they're doing it. They're not going to have the opportunity to slip it when I'm not looking or when other people aren't looking and get my money or my valuables out of there. And so what I basically do is I keep a key to that because I can't take it through the metal detector. I'll keep a key in a separate bag that's going through or I'll just throw that key inside like my shoe uh, on a necklace. Uh, so that they're, they're not going to be situationally aware enough of exactly what's going on to be able to get to that, unlock it in the time that it's going to go through that conveyor belt. So when coming into the Philippines through Manila Airport, be aware that those things do exist. Um, hopefully, it looks like the government really is cracking down on that this time. Like I said, we've had so many arrests today and yesterday that uh, they do look like they're taking it very seriously. But you need to be situationally aware, take precautions, make sure that you know the things that you have that are valuable, that you take as much effort as you can to protect those and watch your luggage when you're going through those x-ray machines and be aware of where they're going through and who is touching it and who is looking at it. All right, gang, sorry to bring a little sad news because the Philippines is a wonderful place. I'm enjoying my time here. I always enjoy the Philippines, but everybody needs to be aware of these facts when they're traveling because we can try to make sure that they're not going to take advantage of us.